Got ourselves a game three deep into the night as we have a super long game followed by a relatively quick one, you know, less than 30 minutes, so it wasn't too bad, but both sides showing strengths. I think Top Esports are starting to slowly grow into the series, though. I think the longer this series goes on, the more I'm kind of thinking, I think, top half of this. They're finding EDG's resistance in the lane quite formidable. It's not like mm. the usual top esports game where laning phase, they just somehow acquire a massive gold advantage, and they're set from that uh, from that point on. It really does come down to the team fighting phase, and I think it tests both of these teams. Neither of these teams are known as necessarily the most explosive of team fight teams, and this is a good time to kind of decide who comes out on the upper hand. So I think I love how this series is developing. I want to see more of those 5v5s. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And uh, who do you think got the MVP? Well, I'm asking who you think. We know. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I know yeah, who got know the who MVP. It is. Who do you think should have gotten the MVP? I felt like it should have either gone to Ben with his in mm -hmm. initiations or maybe to... Uh, Maybe to XX or maybe to Loken. I feel like those three members had the better showing here. It went to Knight, and we were both a bit annoyed about this, but <laughs> we'll take it. He did play well on the cork. He did neutralize it, but I think the focus was definitely more on, like you said, the team fighting aspect of both these squads. Yeah, and we have to go deep into that. Those clips were absolutely amazing. You know, I, I felt like Top Esports had a very lucky role in the Drake, so allowed him to get that super fast first Drake in. Uh, the fir first Baron, we thought the game was over. Look at XX, this is a great start. But JJ kicks Knight into the middle of a Rakan ultimate, gives the perfect cover for Jinu to then go in and bomb the rest of the team. So this was the first great start. But EDG, I felt like they let things go to their head just a little too far. And this fight was very difficult to engage on. Scout is spotted out at the very start of the fight. And then he still tries to hard force Ooh. into a choke. There's an Aatrox and a Jarvan between that choke. And it was impossible for the rest of EDG members to really follow up on that. Yeah, I think, you know, Scout got a little bit overzealous. I think, you know, yeah, he did. <laughs> definitely got a bit excited. And he was just like, oh, I can get right in between them. And everyone was kind of like, wait. And then he's just already like flipping halfway across the map. And it's just like, no. <laughs> uh, that was unfortunate. Jarvan yeah. played that fight so well. Cataclysm, then EQ combo. It was like. Knock up, a knock up, a knock up. So yeah, you can see. It had no you ever see that comic where it's like uh, the Lee Sin lands a Q and it's like level one or near the turret and it's just like, don't take the Q. And he's like, but you don't understand. I landed my Q. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes straight in onto the Ezreal. Probably the most mobile of anyone he was going to go in on top of and then realized very quickly, like, oh, I have no exit strategy. And that's. Uh, that was unfortunate for the side of EDG as uh, Top Esports do take us to a game three. And. Uh, I'm curious to see what the pick and bans look like now, because if we're just going to see an Akali Corky again, first two oh, picks. Oh, there will be no Akali blind pick. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think the Akali was the problem. It wasn't the problem, but it also did not help the early game that much being pushed That's in. True. You just give over one, uh, like one turret plating, you're, you're kind of invisible earlier on. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to actually get a gank for Akali pre-6. So I, I think you just see a move away from that one. Um, and go on to something that uh, that has more of an early game kill threat. Things like the Jace, like the Aurelia, they have been banned the entire series. We might see if someone slips up on that one, they could still see some sunlight. Speaking of sunlight, Leona obviously a fantastic pick for the side of Top Esports. Ben looking pretty damn strong on these. What are those handouts? What are those flyers? I think they're just a check to make sure that... Oh, uh, have you done all these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. Make sure the game just doesn't go haywire in between. As EDG come back out. Still have a chance to be able to win this series, be able to take down top esports. And even if they lose, if nothing else, they've shown a fantastic showing into why they should be feared going into playoffs. They're currently sitting at sixth place. So EDG really wants to fight for the chance to get out of the first round. If you don't have to play the first round, it's such a massive advantage. You don't have to face the likes of Invictus Gaming. You get some extra points and more scouting information from your opponents. And EDG scouting. do have to go far. Scout. There's a connection. I hope there was more <laughs> connection than that, but I may I would be I'm very being, patient. I'm, very, I'm at a very baseline right now. <laughs> 
But like you said, like a lot of scouting, a lot of like kind of like, you know, team strategies. I doubt they'll be showing their their 100% here's my hand at this stage of the playoffs. They're both locked in. Top Esports obviously still chasing for those semi-final buys. EDG also still chasing for those quarterfinal buys. You do not want to be in the first round because obviously points and championship points for that regional gauntlet run still very much a thing. And overall, you know, at the end of the day, both these sides, they just need points on the board. Yeah, neither of them really performed up to expectations earlier in spring, so we're trying to remedy that situation. This time around, we should have EDG with the side selection, so they could potentially find a counter pick to scout, make his life a bit easier. I'll have to wait and see. We're going to jump into picks and bans for a third and final game of the day, third and final game of the week. As before we go into week 11, EDG looking to try and take this one 2-1 over top esports. And again, same bands coming out from both sides. Do you take out the Corky? Don't really think so. I feel like Corky is just a champion where there are a lot of good counters to, like the Talia, and shove him in. He's not that mobile. Uh, he actually doesn't have that much priority earlier on. So EDG not going to take that away, going to go for the Silas instead, and that does leave themselves open for, again, one of the power picks, Aurelia, they're looking for. Uh, Akali is still up, which I don't think Top Esports is going to be interested in. What else is here? EDG not really a great Karma team, so not betting that, but taking away the Tom Kench instead. Yeah, I like this away from the side of EDG. Almost certainly not going to be picking any of these horrors <laughs> as uh, there's no way you blind pick any of them. And uh, just having fun. <laughs> yeah, he's just cycling through everybody. Oh, and wow. again, I, I told you, I think Scout is just a very good quality player. Just needs to calm himself down a little bit. Okay, well, I guess we're going to see the same start of the draft then. Okay, you pick Akali, I'll pick Corky. Do they want to take away the Vladimir from Jinu though? I feel like that's a good trade away because 369. Definitely did not have a good time. Neither did the side of top esports because once Jinu got ahead, it was just such a huge amount of damage they able to put out. I feel like if those those last two engages had gone any longer, Jinu would have been able to trade them back as positively as he possibly could have. But EDG now look and see what they can do. They've taken the Vladimir and the Jarvan away from them. Aatrox is also on the board, so they're just going to take the flip side of that matchup. I feel like they're going to lock in their jungler pretty soon as well. You don't want to go into the second round of pick ban without having him locked in, considering the emphasis that both sides have put onto it. Yeah, they're lo really looking for strong early game junglers that can secure kills alone. And Starvin, and Zin Zhao has always been an option, but honestly, you don't need to take it there. Wow. No one bans it. And they're going to go with the Kaiser, so locking in their AD carry before they go into the next man phase. So I imagine they're gonna start focusing on those ones. Corky gonna be locked in here, you would imagine by top esports, but it is still hover at the moment. So they're waiting to evaluate what they have and haven't got available to them, given how they anticipate the ban phase two going. Yep, locked and loaded, and now here we go. Back into the bans. So looking at a support and a jungler potentially getting banned from top esports. The question really here is uh, what could what could pose a massive threat to 369 in the top side? At Aatrox, if you give him a little bit of crowd control, can actually shut down the Vladimir quite hard in the early game. I'm not just going to go for junglers. Still going to focus down onto engage supports from Mako. Mako is the team captain of EDG. He's been the main shot caller. So taking him out of the initiation role does weaken EDG's uh, priority by quite a bit. There's Loken's Ezreal taken off the board. I like this from EDG, recognizing that that was a big thorn in the side of their of their team composition last time round. Take that away, it means the full poke composition is not available for the side of top esports. And like I said, more engaged supports being taken down by top esports. Alstar also hitting the ban list. And now EDG just looking at how they can find uh, how, how they can take away powerful combos in the bottom side. And pretty much Braum is left as a support. And what goes well with Braum? Uh, Loken has played some Lucian, but he's actually more of a Kalista player than Lucian. So Kalista Volleybear. 
Oh god. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> It'd be so insane. I would be so disappointed, but it would be pretty cool. It would be very cool. Unfortunately, not going to happen. The Nautilus locked in. Callista still very much on the board, though, like you said. Nautilus and Callista do have some pretty good innate synergies. For EDG, don't you dare do it. <laughs> don't you dare. Get that off my screen. Get he it off. He has to play engages. Uh, I don't what care. Else is left? I don't care. This, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This pick is garbage. <laughs> this pick is garbage. Uh, oh my god. I'm so tilted already. EDG, why? I get the Skarner, but why the Volley Bear? I need someone. I need an analyst or a pro player. I, you know, I need like I, someone I, to explain it to me because I just don't get it. In all honesty, I would just prefer the Leona at that point. Yes, exactly. If you just exactly. want to find an initiation, why don't, why don't you just take the Leona? Leona Kaisa is actually a great lane. Really good first Great damage. kill lane. We talked about it the other day, last uh, last uh, Friday, or sorry, excuse last Wednesday when we saw it as well. And that is going to be the Skarner locked in, has got good point and click CC, means that you have to pay the Quicksilver Sash tax on the side of top esports, but you know what, we're not even gonna talk about the Volley Bear. We're done with Volley Bear. And yep. congratulations, Top Esports, you won the series 2-1. God <laughs> damn it. Zaya <laughs> locked in. Wow, just, that, that was so a really fast call. So tilted. <laughs> it's Believe like, me, it, I am as well. I can imagine, I can just, I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I'd actually be happier if they just don't swap around the positions. Now. Honestly, like right now, <laughs> yes. Go full but, yep. on. This is exactly how we're gonna play it. No. Uh, oh, no, never mind. It's just I'm uh, taking the Skarner. <laughs> <laughs> more it, interesting in the bot side. Locked and loaded. I would love for EDG to make me eat my words and uh, for them to be able to come out with the win here. But I just feel like the Leona is just Volley Bear, but better. And Nautilus is Volley Bear, but better. It's just a lot more engaging. I have to say, those two bands from uh, Top Esports really worth their weight in gold, taking away Rakan and Alistar. Mako looks at his options, looks at his coach, and goes, I've got one thing left. Ride or die, baby. Here we go. <laughs> Ride or die, indeed. And curious to see, though, exactly how EDG want to play this early game. I imagine with the picks they have picked up with the Skarner as well as the Volley Bear, we might see an early level two gank in that bot lane. But if you're on the side of Top Esports, you should be expecting that as well. So overall, both sides, relatively good laning phases. All lanes realistically have kill pressure on them if you are able to get that jungler intervention coming in, especially towards that bot side. And the only difference this time is I think Top Esports is more aware of how dive-heavy EDG are. They have selected the Zaya to counter that one out. And of course, the uh, the Cataclysm and Nautilus knockup is still very viable in preventing people from charging in on your AD carries. So Top Esports taking a more defensive stance. Uh, Top Esports giving a more, uh, taking a more defensive stance given how the series has gone so far. We'll have to wait and see who is able to take game three. So we're just waiting to jump onto the riff. I actually thought the music ended. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like we went so long <laughs> that the music ended. It's and, like when uh, you're expecting the drop, but there's another build up instead. You're like, huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's kind of like that like weird crescendo or uh, you know diminuendo that just drops and you're just like, oh, okay. But we are finally onto the riff, ladies and gentlemen, for Game three of this best of three. To see now who is able to take this series. Wow, crowd is pretty damn intense right now. That was a great shouting from pretty much both sides. They know how much this matchup means. Very much will decide playoffs, uh, playoff seating at this point. EDG sharing the position with Suning now, both at eight match wins. Top Esports a little bit further ahead, but they are at third place, so they're looking to make top two. Neither of these squads really want to give up on this opportunity, advance themselves, and take a look at the early level one. So Top Esports does not know where the enemy uh, jungler is starting just yet. And because of they're afraid of that level two, they are sending XX just to make sure. <laughs> and you see XX just trying to find out what went down. They see the red buff is gone. 
and went from buff to buff. But overall, because of the scouting that XX, I'll tell you, the red buff is not gone. Yeah. Red buff is there. <laughs> Just pulled out by the Demacian standard. And JJ not going to find a red buff here. So red to red means that JJ going to be counter jungled. Sadly for him, going to lose the third buff. Doesn't really need the red buff as such. Much prefers the blue. As long as he farms inside the spires, he should still be relatively healthy. I'm taking a look at the uh, runes right here. Ingenious Hunter being selected, so faster Predators takes here, and all the rest is just to move as fast as possible. Very good trade from Jinu. Again, couldn't be seeing this lane matchup where we said, you know, very hard to see either, you know, the Aatrox or the Vladimir taking any kills, so we're not going to focus too much on that. Same with the mid lane as such. I'm more interested towards that bot lane. And of course, we meme about the Volley Bear. We meme about it, and I just personally don't think it's a very good pick. However, you know, it, it clearly has its merits, and it clearly has a particular style that, you know, teams very much value. We've seen it banned quite a few times. We've seen it pick, you know, a couple of times here or there. And, you know, obviously teams see the value within it. I think it's just more the execution in it is not quite there. It engages. <laughs> that is what I will say for I wanted you to give me a little bit more there, buddy. <laughs> okay. But this is actually a really good wait for my boy. There we go. Engage comes in. Flash in with the knockback. Loken not going to bother using his flash or his heal. And that is straight up just a kill going over to the side of EDG. Nicely done there from their bot lane. Yeah, a very unpredictable path from JJ going straight from base into lane. So no prior wars could have been able to spot him out there. And, you know, as much as we talk about the Volley Bear, if you're going in for those kills, it's still very difficult to avoid. You just flash instantly proc the CC, two plasma stacks, and a good chunk of first damage to go with it. And that is the danger you have, obviously. The flash flip with the Triumphant Roar as well. Just gives so much CC, and as well as the Aftershock being proc means Mako is just so tanky into that matchup. And Sadly for the Zaya, if you uh, don't flash immediately, you're just dead. And uh, the Skarner support was nice for the side of EGG as well. It means extra little bit of CC comes in with the Q. Yeah, I, I like how top esports decide to play that. Even if you flash, you're still likely dead because of the Predator. So, you know, just taking that one slow and saying, you know, you got us on this one. And it did force a bit of an overreaction from uh, XX, at least. Uh, Shongshong did have to take that red to red path just to make sure his bot lane could continue to push. How we've usually seen the lane work uh, when you pick a Volley Bear is you, you don't really care about lane priority. It's much more about a kill lane. So you actually kind of want the enemy very close to your own tower. And uh, that actually does trip up teams from time to time because most of the, uh, the predominant idea about playing bot lane is still to constantly shove. Man, nice little senses there for Mako putting in a Pink Ward into his own jungle, spotting out the Jarvan, obviously recognizing that they do not have control over their red side jungle. As we see JJ going to use that information that he has now received to push in and get these Krugs. And pretty much like it's it's almost like exclusively vertical <laughs> jungling right now because uh, XX has got the priority in mid, which means it's very easy for him to walk into that top side of the jungle, or sorry, bot side of the jungle, excuse me. And I do wonder if top esports can continue to keep Akali down. Uh, in both games, uh, Scott was able to get a 2-0 start. My boy, just a couple steps forward and he will be in range. See Ben just looking, fishing with that hook, if you like, but with a volley bear in front of him. He does not want to hook that, wants to hook the eye boy. XX is here as well, sitting on a pink cord, so he knows he's not in vision. However, Ben just feeling like he might be giving up the ghost just a little bit. EDG have to feel like something's up. Yeah, there's no way they really go for that fight. Skarner's not on the side of the map. They have no vision behind it. I trust in EDG to be a bit more careful than that. So, wow, XX actually wasting a lot of time here. This is a this is very <laughs> reminiscent of Ning. Remember when Ning used to do this? He used to just sit somewhere and just be there for like 45 seconds or so and just be all like, this is fine. But eventually he goes back. Nothing gained, only time lost. Doesn't really lose much, to be perfectly honest, as the Skarner doesn't really have much to kind of do on, on either side of the map as the Vla Vladimir had gone back as well as the Akali, so a real loss to sitting there. Yeah, I, I'm just a bit surprised by that one. Uh, I still think you lose a bunch of time for, uh, you know, not farming your camps, but 
Probably read that the Skarner would be heading towards the bottom side for a repeat gank. Didn't really happen. I really read it as more of a protective uh, gank from XX, just making sure that uh, Loken would stay alive with the lane pushed up. And he's doing his due diligence. Like, you can tell that XX, XX would be a very protective father. I really appreciate that you're saying XX, by the way. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you should I call him by it. the way his name is pronounced. It's Chong Chong, which means... Chong Chong. Yeah, which means Bear Bear. <laughs> bear Bear. Yeah. But he's against the Bear Bear. That is true. Yeah. He should be picking the Volley Bear. Or the Udyr. <laughs> There's enough bears already. Yeah. <laughs> oh. JJ, though. Flash. Not going to actually yes, get the... Six ultimate off on top of him. Mako now going to jump straight in and they have got priority into this fight coming straight Jinu's on top here. of it. Jinu is just trying to find out more and more of a zone away and two quick kills to EDG. Great advantages and just knowing that he's going to invade. Yeah, Jinu was so proactive on that one. He came all the way from the top side and EDG just reads XX like a book. XX is massively behind in uh, experience at this point. Yeah, and that was just, like like you said, just reading him like a buff, knowing that, well, he's done this twice now to steal the red buff. I wonder if he's going to try and do it again, and lo and behold, gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar. And EDG pick up two quick kills. Scout, also the benefactor of one of those kills. How does Scout always get on two kills? I know, right? I was like, the he's, he just seems to get going every single time, and there's nothing the top esports can do about it. It's truly remarkable. He was down 20 CS in lane. Like, he's just getting shoved out constantly, uh, shoved in constantly, and he's still able to just pull yeah. that out. Picks up a kill, equals out the CS difference. You know, kill equals roughly about 18 to 19 CS on average-ish, but uh, Knight. Actually, Mako, oh. Maybe they look to try and fully collapse on top of it. It's a 3v3 right here. Knight going to get flipped back straight in in front of the Akali. Has to back away immediately. Red buff will be stolen, but they get a summoner for getting the red. A bit of a sloppy engage coming in from top esports here. They've expended so much. Even though they have priority in the bot side, they don't really have it in the rest of the map. And I, I just feel like... They themselves are not reading EDG's uh, movements as well as it could, as well as they could be. And EDG, these are some very cheeky plays, actually. You know, they their their bottom side is getting pushed in, but Mako's like, you know what? I'll I'll wait underneath this tower in yeah. this brush. I'll Absolutely. just wait. Absolutely. You know, they're they're not putting a lot of emphasis on that. You know, bot lane as such, like you said, but they are using this volley bear to its fullest. We'll have the flash available as well, so we can imagine maybe an engage coming in from that volley bear very soon. Jinu gonna find out Ben as they start to rotate around this map and Skyers Bloom gonna catch out the top laner who was being a sneaky sneak. They are affording a lot of free time towards this Vladimir in that top side, and I do think that's something to be wary of. We saw how powerful that pick was in that previous game for Jinu, but with the priority now going towards that mid lane, Kaiser, Kali, and Volibear all there. They are able to pick up themselves a Rift Herald, and you can see immediately rotate towards that top side, gaining the priority within this push. Yeah, so EDG right now, they just need to make up what they're losing on the bottom side. Very early rotation. However, Loken shouldn't be able to get that much out of this, because as soon as a Kali shows up, I'm sure he'll need to take some safety precautions. Actually, it's a 2-2 split. They're putting the bot duo into that mid lane. Now they're going to start rotating up towards that top side and really put the pressure on towards getting that first turret. However, they are trading it for bot side pressure in response. And overall... the uh, tempo lead here. Yeah, we'll take oh, first overall getting a tempo lead, but still trading equally towards top, top esports. And this is very proactive from EDG's side. Uh, the reason that they were able to do this play was Loken and Ben actually uh, were pushed in, did a back, came out, and EDG just wrapped onto that opportunity, instantly going to the top side, forcing that one out. And I, I think there should be a CS difference uh, accrued from this as well. Oh, actually, wow, they're not going to get the turret Ooh. down the bot oh. side, so... Not going to get that last plate, not going to get that gold to equal it up, so it's going to sit at about a 1,500 gold lead in favor of EDG, which is solely sitting on Tujinu on that Aatrox above that Vladimir. If you saw the gold, he's on like 5,400 or 5,500 versus 4,000, so definitely funneling into that Aatrox as much as they physically can as the 
rest of this team has been kind of subdued as such. Definitely a lot slower of a game than we saw in the previous one. A lot quicker than the game one. It's going to be a while since, uh, before Top Esports is going to be able to equalize this gold deficit. There's nothing much on the top side, so as long as EDG are willing to hold on to that tower, they could just be patting themselves a nice gold advantage going into the next Drake. And the big thing as well, with that tower not going down the bot side, with another Mountain Drake spawning in just over a minute, it makes it a lot easier for the side of EDG to rotate over and, you know, kind of cover their bases, cover their warding spots, and, you know, make sure that they are safe because, you know, not only does the tower give you that safe haven for, you know, maybe a little bit of safe haven in terms of you don't want to die because of the damage, but it also gives you vision so you know if someone walks up past that uh, bot lane kind of route towards the tri-bush. It makes it very difficult for you to then teleport behind them. Mm -hmm. You're always going to spot out when someone is dropping vision in those backside boards, uh, backside brushes. So it, it does look like EDG are thinking the same things we are. They're willing to rotate their bottom lane once again to the bot side just to hold on to that tower and minion wave. See now, turret plate's going to be falling very, very soon. Overall, pretty equal in terms of who took what. And to be honest, I think Top Esports are going to be happy enough just trying to get that Triforce on tonight, try and delay this game. I think they will give up the Mountain Drake because they don't really have the priority as Jarvan is up on that top side. So Mountain Drake number two going to go over to the side of EDG. Quick little plate stolen there by uh, 369 to try and get him back into relevancy. <laughs> He's actually gone with the Proto Bell first item to try and make sure he has got that push priority and uh, you know keeps him a little bit safe and also has a little bit of engage, a little extra engage outside of the flash. Yep. And I, I like that cheeky play for Max X. He knows he's not going to get Mountain, so might as well spend that last few seconds uh, getting gold here. This is not really diveable from, Whoa! Ooh, from top. Scout says, this is my turret. Yep. Hemo Plague was dropped, but Scout <laughs> just deletes X. X, I wasn't even expecting that. Uh, I didn't like the idea for X that's walking out there. I, I felt like that was so risky. There was no chance for them to, to dive that one. And they trade back what nearly is like a 50% tower on the bot side for it as well. So uh, I just don't agree with these calculations. The first one was cheeky, was fine. The second one was just, no, man, no. It's just mis misjudged. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd love to see a replay of that, and a great awareness from Scout as well, just knowing where and how he can push his advantage, knowing his limits of his champion. This is the kind of the, the upsetting thing, as I suppose, as we go closer and closer towards playoffs. There's going to be some of these fantastic mid laners who don't get to go to Worlds, and this is just such a, you know, a strange, you know, misstep from top, who've just been so good during the regular season. Instantly, XX knows he's in trouble, EQ's out, still dies. Single burst rotation. He only used one passive on that as well. <laughs> Again, you know, safety in numbers, but another call. He has two or an, an early kill at the time and a Hextech Gunblade. You're not really that safe. You need to be so damn careful with the pure burst damage she has available in her kit. Vampires are terrible guardians. Don't don't go in with them. Like uh, that was just so unnecessary. <laughs> Vladimir, not exactly the strongest at this early stage in the game, is level 11, so has got a little bit in terms of, you know, cooldown reductions in that, you know, leveling up in his Q. However, did go with the Proto Belt, so a little bit more defensive as such. Has got the uh, Sword Shoes as well to boot, no pun intended. This is a big buy for Knight, coming out with Hex Drinker and Triforce completed. So we should see him taking over the, uh, should at least be able to beat Aatrox at this point. I'm not sure about the 2-0 on Akali, but Aatrox should still be fine. Good replenishment of uh, control wards here from the side of EDGs. They all go back and pick up some more. Making sure they can push up their line of vision, pick up some more objectives. A third Mountain Drake going to be spawning in just over two and a half minutes. So EDG going to want to take that one up, and that makes their Baron take incredibly fast, regardless of uh, you know who is actually doing it. And this is a, such a powerful composition if you don't have uh, vision control over objectives. There's no uh, Quicksilver Sash being built right now on any member for Top Esports. So a lot of prime targets for Jijia, Predator, and Flash. Uh, top Esports have to be super proactive if they want to secure any objective. Yeah, no QSS on anyone on the side of 
top esports. They have not paid the tax man that is JJ on this Skarner. You can see they just go over, take half health HP off of that turret, and all it took was a predator. Yeah, and these rotations are killing top esports right now. I love how they force multiple members. Ooh, Mako. Down to half HP. Still got to respect the Triforce Corky with the Sork Shoes. Does 90% magic damage on his auto attacks, so effectively is a, you know, kind of spell caster. But overall, EDG still not out of the woods yet. They still need to make those proper rotations. A lot of engage available to top esports if they find the right moments to use it. And this is a good timing for top esports, you know, just sneaking the wards in there proactively. Very important. Don't want to be walking blind against the Volibear here or the Skarner. So this is going to be the big fight. Both sides are revved up in terms of their items. I would give the initiation advantage towards EDG. They do have a lot of potentials to just flash and catch someone. Very easy for the comps to do. And it's going to be top esports that need to basically tippy toe into this area. <laughs> Just under a minute till that dragon spawns. You can tell that the side of top esports do not want to give that one up as they have now this time around rotated their jungler and support in to this lane. But Ben needs to be careful. Flash into the impale. And that is going to be Ben not actually dying wow. just yet. Gets himself out with the heal as well. Eventually will die to iBoy, but Aatrox has to be sacrificed as well. The Cataclysm comes in. The engage is there for the side of Top Esports as they look to try and take out Scout, who gets caught up on the blade or the Feathers Caller, and he gets taken down. It's a two for two. It's actually two for three in favor of Top Esports. They come out on top. Yeah, such a close fight, but Jinu over chases on that one. Ben does make out with the flash and the uh, the dredge line hitting towards the wall. And the backside of that fight looked really good as well for uh, for EDG. I felt for a moment that they might be able to win it. But Loken, with the stopwatch enabled, was, uh, was able to just drag that team fight out, get out of the rotation from Akali, and survive to for another day. This one was a great start. But I so think, many ultimates. Yeah, I, I felt like afterwards they didn't really need to hard force that one. Jinu actually flashes in and dies in the midst of four people. It was a great distraction from both Scout and 369. But Loken was just able to stay alive longer in that one. Ooh, great flash. Gets the Blade Caller as well. That was so intense. Perfectly timed route from Loken and. You see the damage there done by 369. He was given free reign onto that backside with his Hemo Plague, which meant that he was able to just do so much with his Crimson Rush and his uh, Tides of Blood. So huge turnaround there in favor of Top Esports, and they deny the Triple Mountain Drake, which is exactly what they wanted. And overall, EDG, again, just kind of small little mistakes that, you know, kind of stop them from really taking this game as there is the package that's going to act like an equalizer to just separate the rest of EDG from this pick as Mako gets caught. And now EDG, they could potentially look for Baron if they have the waves in their favor. They don't, so they're just going to look for mid. Unlucky Mako. He actually wasn't spotted there. He goes out of the brush and realizes, wait a minute, probably not the right engage to take. Uh, that was... Almost self-inflicted, I have to say. Yeah, I think he kind of got a, a rush of blood to his head and realized, like, oh, I, I see the, the Corky going in with the package. Didn't respect the sheer amount of people. As I say, that scout going to jump in onto the backside of this, but it's oh. a fantastic cataclysm. And Corky rains down an absolute armada onto the side of EDG. Triple kill tonight. Both sides were waiting for the initiation, but XX definitely had the better start. Cataclysm plus three-man knockup, an EQ combo. Finished up by Knight, perfect triple, and Scout doesn't even go in. Scout's like, oh, okay, this is over. <laughs> Scout goes in, immediately jumps back out because he's uh, yeah. like, you know what, I actually can't jump back to this fight in any way. And Top Esports, on the flip of a coin, turn this game around, take the gold lead, take the Baron, find themselves in a prime position to take this series. Oh, that was so sweet. Much better timing here. Gets the tower down and just multi-man knock up. There's nothing iBoy can do here. I feel so bad for the guy. He's just trapped inside with the Hemo Plague. Hemo Plague, rockets that do AoE damage. You've got so much just. And it was it was a cataclysm into the EQ knockup, into the Hemo Plague. And as you said, iBoy unfortunately could do nothing. And uh, unfortunately for Mako and for Volibear in particular, 
don't think the win rate's going to be getting any better for this Volley Bear. And to be perfectly honest, it's not the Volley Bear's fault. And the last one kind of was. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think, I don't, definitely I, down here. Okay, so yeah, it's on 10 HP. Showing. It's on 10 HP. <laughs> A slight breeze would take that one down at this stage. But Scout on this Akali has had moments of brilliance. However, it hasn't really turned into much more in this game as we see Top Esports able to neutralize, you know, this Akali as the games have gone on. The early game, game one, unbelievable, couldn't do anything about it. Game two, still got one or two kills, but wasn't as oppressive. Game three, literally can't have an impact at the moment. Really sneaky, but if I'm EDG, I definitely am aware that someone's here. No one else is on the map. See Loken there. I know that most people are uh, here. JJ. They're just going to jump straight in onto JJ's. The teleport does come in as well. They can put down a little bit of damage. He does pop the Gargoyle stone, stone Plate, but only to delay the inevitable. And EG are falling apart. Oh, that feels so bad for JJ. Scorpion Arena gets locked up for life. Doesn't have his flash, so very well timed on that one. Yeah, and this is honestly top esports can keep going. There's no defense. There's no you know wave clear as such on the side of EDG. The Kaiser only just getting a third item now, has got the Phantom Dancer, so gonna be able to a little bit you know, survivability within these fights, but bot lane inhibitor goes down, and now they're looking for Scout, who should be okay, isn't a Kali at the end of the day, with Flash and Teleport, so should not be getting caught, but EDG look lost. Yeah, EDG look like they're hard forcing a lot of times. Uh, they didn't actually have full vision of who was in that brush. They kind of just went in on a bet. Scout was nowhere near and was like, ah, oh, we could take this 4v4 maybe. And there's like, oh, the whole team's here. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so it was, it, it's a bit questionable to, to see the way that JJ decided to initiate on that. And it also kind of show you the mentality of EDG when they do fall behind. I feel like EDG is a team that understands their very early game mid game reliance. So a lot of the times when you see them fall behind, their reaction is, we gotta go for the most extreme option on the table. What's left? Full engage, let's do it. <laughs> you see now the EDG just trying to get the split push going, but you can't really win a split push against a incredibly fed Vladimir and also a Baron up top esports. JJ is off to the side, still no Real QSS is picked up, only the Corky has that one, but he's not going to be able to find a place to engage as Scout is nowhere near this fight to capitalize as the rest of top esports start pushing in towards that second inhibitor in the mid lane. Bot lane also shoving in super hard, so a lot of free time for top esports to just take this one down. Baron finally goes down. Yeah, but I don't think there's going to be much stopping this top esports push as they try and just go in. There's the hook, going to land onto the Skarner. They're going to drop down the ultimate from the Nautilus as well. And here comes the full on engage. Skarner's the first one to fall as top esports now find themselves in a rhythm with a great blade caller. Means that more people get rooted up. That 369 jumps onto the backside, take out iBoy, and also Scout. It ends up being a fantastic hook by Ben does trade out his life, unfortunately, but it ends up being the fight completely owned by Top Esports. Only two people left to defend against the four from Top Esports. A lot of blinky health bars. If Scout wants to make a highlight reel, this is the perfect time. This is when he has to go for it, gets knocked up, but is in his shroud, so should be able to stave off any kind of re-engage. They are aware the TPs are available from the side of Jinu and Scout. So they're gonna back themselves away, go for this dragon, get themselves more objectives. So at the end of the day, they have all the time in the world. I love the way that XX has been playing these team fights. It is so hilarious. He's just like, I know Scout has been winning you all these games. I'm just going to lock him up, and that's it. Like, I have the GA. I don't care. I'll take full damage on this one. The rest of the team can't win the 4v4. It's such, it's such a hopeless feel for EDG to watch their main carry just taken out of a fight like that one. Very good awareness here. Gets two like flashes out. It looks funny, but super effective. <laughs> yeah, and completely zones out Eyeboy and Scout means the rest of his team can do, do deal with this uh, Aatrox and Skarner. And what I gotta say is as well is that the the initiations from Ben have been top notch. Yes, he does go down there. They do almost kill off the Akali, but his initiations with these hooks, max range, have just been absolutely amazing from the side of Ben on this TES uh, squad. And, Actually, just as we come back out of the, you know, the, the the Baron power play and how much it gave, it's actually a full AD Jarvan with the Warrior Enchantment and the GA. So he's looking to try and burst people down to kind of do a little bit more damage before these fights even begin. 
Uh, it's just a fun time, you know? He w really wants to get that big burst for 369 with the Hemo Plague down. And every extra bit of damage helps uh, when you have damage amplification like that. So, I, I just like the way, I, I love the way Top Esports been fighting that one. And like you were mentioning, because Ben got the double initiation on the front line, effectively it was Jinu 1v5ing for the first five seconds of the fight. Jinu was like, guys, guys, where are you? Guys? Oh dear, flash burnt there by the Skarner, which means no flash steal on this potential Baron take from the side of EDG as Top Esports just keep pushing themselves in. They don't even need to go for this Baron right now. They've got the package, they could force a fight. Yeah, and they do have a fast Baron take here as well. Lots of damage being built already. Mountain Drake down. They know it's going down, but not a ton of things that Scout can do about this. And Scout does TP in. He's going to be a little late to this fight, but has got a flank on the top side. Mikkel gets jumped on as him and Venga taken very, very low. The rest of the team are going to have to deal with 369, who's just doing so much damage. Top Esports re-establish themselves on top of this fight. They get themselves the ace and they only lose Loken. Yeah, too much initiations from top esports. All the flash expended from the prior fight. There's nothing much that EGG could do. I felt like they had a very strong composition in terms of what they wanted. The Akali, you know, the initiation from Skarner and, uh, and Volley Bear, but they just couldn't get it rolling. They're gonna try and just escort these minions right up to the Nexus turrets. EDG, they put up a great fight in both game one and game two, but you gotta feel like they kinda just rolled over in game three as Top Esports take the series two to one. Great performances from Top Esports, especially in those team fights. They really mapped out how they wanted those fights to go. Then multiple times, the first one getting focus fired, but always able to stay alive until the last. XX just putting iBoy away in a prison of the Cataclysm. iBoy never had a good time to deal damage whatsoever. The dives were beautiful, the initiations were beautiful. Top Esports are taking their talents beyond the laning phase. They're showcasing their team fighting strength. Great practice for them, of course, going into long series, being able to change up their draft, being able to move around their opponents and be able to change up what they had from a loss into a win. And of course, EDG are going to be feeling a bit dejected after that. It started so brightly, but unfortunately, Top Esports was just a little too much for them. I think there's obviously guaranteed playoffs, but they may not be guaranteed any buys. And that means they're going to have to go and fight in that round one. And we talked about some of the teams they might have to face against, you know, the IGs of the world, the Team WEs potentially as well as Sooning. You know, you're most likely four teams in the first round of playoffs. So. No one really there I, I fancy my chances against, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, all tough composition around the board for uh, EDG, and they will have to be looking long and hard on what went wrong in this series. It seems like in terms of uh, just coordinating the team fights, they have been consistently beaten a lot of the times. We have seen some success recently from EDG. Uh, they did play against, uh, uh, I believe it was OMG and Vici. It's been a while since we actually broadcast an EDG game, and you know it, it's been a very up and down ride for them. They, they lost RNG FBX 0-2s. They took games off Vici and OMG, which were frankly kind of expected wins. So we didn't have a great sense of where EDG actually ended up after the Rift Rivals break. And now I think we have a better picture. They have still have some of the best laners in the entire league. Jinu had a great performance. Scout, I don't know how he's able to consistently get two kills before 15 minutes every single game, but he does it. It's just after after that, during the middle phases of the game, during the team fights, where I feel like they do trip up quite often. Uh, they don't look like they have great decision making on whether to go in or stay out of the fight or to give over objectives when it comes to it. And as well as that, like JJ on this Skarner, he didn't punish the lack of QSSs at all. Just went in on top of Ben, went in on top of XX. He didn't really, I suppose, wasn't even really given an opportunity realistically to make that, you know, Skarner impale super impactful. But at the same time, 
you kind of have to. If you pick a champion that is literally your ultimate and that's all you do, you need to make it count and you need to make sure that you're, you know, forcing that tax or that, you know, respect, if you like, from the other team. It just didn't happen. Yeah, and it, it really feels bad for EDG because if you only look at the early game, I felt like they actually outperformed in all yeah, three games. Yeah, I completely agree. The well, last game even, they still had the 1-3-1 potential. Akali was ahead, Jinnu was ahead, and it looked mm -hmm. like, oh, you just split it out from, from there. But... Uh, the main mistakes they always make, it seems to be when they group around the objectives. That is the, the the core thing that they need to be revisiting is all of these fights. Okay, what do we do wrong? Okay, so to Jinu, maybe don't flash after Ben. It's fine. You already got him super low. Turn around, go for the objective. Don't Get yourself so that triple mountain. Yeah, exactly. It's, it seems like a little bit of impatience and a little bit of frustration as well creeping in. They kind of felt like they had to make a move yep. and overextending, not respecting the heals, the shields, just physically how long it would take them to kill off that Nautilus. And then when Scout wasn't able to kill anyone on the backside, it kind of sealed the deal, unfortunately, for EDG. But for top, great to see them come back into a series. You know, adaptation, very, very important for them, of course. We questioned their champion pools and within certain roles specifically in Ben and Ben had a fantastic series. Yeah, Ben did really really well in this one. I, I like the way they're initiating. This is something that I didn't really expect out of Ben because Ben has been known more to like just protect the AD carry that type of style on his even on the teams he's played with. He's not been the main initiator but he's showcased that he can play that role. You see the early start of a fight where he just goes in like flash Yep. Are your back line <laughs> done? XX go in, lock someone up, perfectly fine. So top are developing their own uh, team fight style, and that is so important in the likes of the LPL because you have different teams that you can just by if you, even if you cover up all the IDs, you can tell which team this is just mm -hmm. by the way they start their fights, who are starting their fights, and the tools that they're familiar with using. So having your own team fight style is super important, and it looks like. Uh, the team fight style for top esports is going to be, you know, we're just going to throw a bunch of in initiation at the start of the fight. We have the better backline carries in Knight and Logan. Yep. We'll let those two guys finish it off, but we'll be super ham in the front at least. So for coming down to the end of week 10, of course, and, you know, we'll have a look at the standings a little bit later, but it's kind of getting to crunch time. Well, it's a little bit more than that. It is crunch time right now. We almost have our like playoffs locked in. We've got, I think, six out of the eight. It's IG yes. who's yet to be locked in. And of course, we're waiting for LNG or Team WE to, to or either- Or JD Gaming. Or JD, potentially, yes. but I'm, I'm giving the more kind of like high percentage chances, if you yeah. like. It is 7-7 <laughs> seven, seven, uh, Team WE, 7-7 seven, seven LNG, of course, as well. You know, who is coming into this playoffs, this postseason, looking like the potential winners of LPL Summer for you? I would say the teams that I feel confident in who have been uh, performing beyond their expectation still only FBX. Yeah. I actually think like maybe FBX and BLG are the ones where they sh uh, are at the positions where they should be. Uh, RNG for me is still a bit of a question mark, a very shaky game uh, even though they still did win it off some really good uh, performance from ZZR. Mm -hmm. uh, still kind of a shaky game against IG. IG you know finding their starting roster week 10 split doesn't feel great necessarily yeah. it's uh, a bit of a bit of a yikes from them a very yeah. big yikes so <laughs> I, I gotta say blg and fbx are the ones that were i'm confident that they will perform at the level we expect them to mm. the rest of the teams it's an lpl free for all yeah this is yeah. this is a really <laughs> messy split this is this is one of those splits that i would not be surprised if we have another team like jd gaming it was just like i don't think this is the same team that played in regular split where they just do super well hmm. or teams that just completely bomb out like EDG did in spring. So really hard to place bets. <laughs> yeah, it, it, if you were betting a man, it would definitely be going on, as you say, BLG and FBX purely off consistency. Yep. I do agree with you there. BLG look incredibly good recently. And it also comes down to their scheduling as well. They don't exactly go against some of the harder talents. So they played a lot of the, the FBXs, the RNGs up very, very early in the split. So took their Ls and moved on and able to build momentum off of that. But so right now, they're the ones that are chasing that kind of like elusive fourth spot to kind of avoid the first round of, uh, of um, gauntlet if you like yep. and that could be the difference between making it into regional playoffs and not making it at all i i feel like blg is one of those teams that is like resident sleeper they could actually just shank some of these teams that are ahead of them like <laughs> you, I don't know, know why. you never <laughs> reckon you never recognize blg in my head all i had was that and then like 
<laughs> just like, <laughs> just just like, like, like literally just coming over like with the face and just like stab. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually see BLG as being like a potential thorn on the side of teams like RNG, which again, we're talking about looking for rosters. I don't think they take down FBX. FBX is just one of those teams that's just, yeah, but like, just, just look rock solid. Ridiculous. Like, yeah. Even in the games where they don't look rock solid, they still look rock solid. Like, it's yeah. just. But BLG could be a massive thorn on RNG, on top esports, on these two teams that are currently above them. But I would not be very comfortable going up against BLG. I, I think BLG actually have somewhat of a chance of making it to finals if people aren't careful. <laughs> and we have got the MVP. I'm going to quickly ask you for your for your guess. Uh, my MVP is uh, Corky once again. Corky yeah. and Knight, you are absolutely correct. It is, of course, Knight. Did have a slightly better game, I feel, this one around 7 0 and 7. Didn't die. Overall, Corky's a pretty good pick. Getting yeah. nerfed next patch. If you want to deal damage, uh, I think Knight is the guy for you. A lot of good plays here from the front line from Top Esports, but he was the one closing down the deals here. You can see the first Drake fight. Jinu goes in. Ah, trades his life for the support. Probably not worth it. And Corky is just untouched throughout this entire sequence. Nobody yep. touched Corky. And Knight is just so comfortable. He's like, wow, this is a dream come true. Look at me. I'm walking amongst ghosts or something. They can't see me. I feel, like, I feel like honorable mention to XX. We talked about his initiations into these fights were just honestly oh, they're so perfect. Smooth. They were so smooth and immediately always going in with a cataclysm, <laughs> recognizing there was no flashes and going, you know what? I'm not going to give you the opportunity to try and trade this back. I'm just out of here. <laughs> I just love how it looks because it looks really silly when the Jarvan does that. He's like, Demacia! And then he backs out immediately. Yeah. And the rest of the team just stands around and shoot, shoots whoever's locked up. It's a, it, it's a great way to play. It is and honestly a, a fantastic adaptation because normally you see flag drag into cataclysm, yes. but I love the adaptation of just, you know, knowing that he can go, well, like cataclysm, flag and drag out, and then I can just do stuff on the outside of this fight. Yeah, it's perfectly reasonable when you're running essentially what is a double AD carry composition uh, like uh, Top Esports is. And these team fights are just pretty fun to watch from uh, from Top Esports. The way they're doing like dives in the sequence that they're doing and just mm -hmm. forcing out skills, knowing when to chase on the 369. All of it's kind of clicking together and that's a big part of Top Esports, which we did not see in the spring slip before. They were one 3 one almost no kills after the laning phase and just suffocate you. Yeah. They were like, well, Hol hold you down and just. <laughs> yeah, it was like 369, 1v2 in the top lane, Knight just 1v2 in the bottom lane. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, we lost both sides. Uh, okay. And, and that's the scary thing. That's why obviously we rate top esports so damn highly. Like, yes, they had the little blip in the radar when Suning took them down 2 oh, but yep. I also think that was a little bit of disrespect in terms of top esports side. They didn't respect the, the picks that Suning yeah. had at the time. As long as Knight is in the main shot caller for the team, I feel like it's a good improvement. Just let him let him do his own thing. You know, yeah. he's got mid lane on lock. Let's just sort everything else out for yeah. him. You know, I, I don't necessarily disagree with Top Esports' uh, you know agenda of putting the players in, uh, putting like uh, the substitute rosters in. But first off, we do have to hear from them. In the interview. Yeah, we're gonna pass it off to you now, of course, for the interview with someone off of Top Esports after their win. 陈小玉,恭喜我们的滔博,您下了今天的比赛,现在来到我们赛后采访的是Loken,先跟大家打招呼 We have Loken for our interview Hello everyone, I am Loken, the AD carry for top Very good Chinese spoken actually All three games today have been very turbulent uh, What thoughts do you have on the games today? How do you feel about them? This is obviously Loken answering in Korean. First off, winning the games is always very happy for us. It feels like our hard work has paid off, so it feels very happy for our growth. <laughs> Your fans have been very nervous about today's matches as they were very back and forth. Why do you think today's matches were so difficult? Uh, 
When we normally scrim, we do a lot of plays, but all the plays we made today just didn't seem to go right. We made a lot of mistakes, and that did cause the game to be very back and forth. It seems like all three games, the early game was, con uh, was controlled by EDG, and you guys got your tempo back in the later phases of the game. How are you able to make these comebacks? Kind of want to guess at look, what Loken is saying, but all of our teammates have really good trust between each other, and we keep on telling each other that we can fight this, we can win this. In the second game, you guys picked up Leona, why did you pick Leona with Braum still up? First, we needed some initiation, and if we had Braum, we would lack that. So we considered Leona and her ability to start fights. In the third game, when you guys were behind, Ben seemed like he made a couple of mistakes in positioning, uh, was captured by Skarner, but you guys were still able to win that fight. Was that on purpose? <laughs> First of all, in our composition, if anyone got caught by the Skarna, it would be a bad thing. So we did actually have uh, prior communication to ask uh, Ben to walk towards that bush by himself. Uh, so today seems to be Ben's birthday, and you guys are going to go to Heidi Lao Hapa Chop afterwards. Do you have anything to say to your support and to celebrate? <laughs> First of all, uh, we've been through a lot, and it seems like you've been playing better and better. So I just want to say happy birthday to you. A couple days ago, we heard Clid say that he beat Tian and Crisp in Korean solo queue. Did that happen? Oh, so it seems like the birthday was for Clid. Excuse me. That game, we were thinking, how could we possibly win against that? Uh, okay, so they said, uh, we, 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 we said something to Doinby, I didn't really catch that, uh, sorry. Is there any fun stories uh, about you in uh, KR Challenger? Have you met any of your teammates? And Loka just replies, uh, can't really think of one for now. Thank you very much, Clement. Of course, the players are always full of words. <laughs> they have such a wide vocabulary. Like. I, I like, it's a double translation from uh, it is, Korean it is. <laughs> to English and then uh, yeah, Chinese. I was going to say, English, I was so. like, you literally have like Chinese to Korean <laughs> to Korean to Chinese back to English. Yeah. So it's like Chinese whispers. It's like, but, you know, but as I we love used to the shout it. out there to, uh, to Clint. You know, happy birthday to him uh, out there. They were on the same team mm -hmm. back on uh, JD Gaming when uh, uh, they were still Yagao, Clint, Ozum, that roster. So kind of sweet to see all these players still looking out after each other. Yeah, obviously, you know, still good friends. I imagine they still keep in touch. And of course, pretty damn happy to be going again with another, you know, kind of like series win, I imagine, on his side as well. And for top, you know, the, the only way is up, I suppose, you know, as, as the famous song goes. Um, 
please tell me you know that song. Uh, we will have a lot to discuss yeah. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my, you know what? We'll talk about it later. Of course, we're going to have a quick look at the standings as they pop up here on your screen as you see. Edward Gaming now going to eight and six. Sooning Gaming keeping themselves in fifth place as they both lost today. But Fun Plus Phoenix and Top Esports also both jumping up onto that standings, cementing their spot within that top three. Over, um, for obvious reasons, we're not really going to talk about the playoffs, but we have to talk about coming into the final week is those last two playoff spots between 11, well, technically 12th and 7th. Yeah, there's a lot of key matchups coming up in here. Suiting and EDG still have a match uh, to look forward to. And then you have uh, Invictus Gaming, uh, I'm sorry, LNG versus Suiting, which is going to be another big one. Going to decide if LNG can actually uh, get out of the grass with those three five win teams and if Suning can move further up into the roster JD Gaming still mathematically not out but very difficult as if two of those three teams hit eight they are uh, they actually just can't catch up anymore yep straight up cannot catch up as we have a look at tomorrow's games it is going to be Dominus versus Victory 5 as Dominus keep chasing that playoff dream as well as JD Gaming versus OMG later on in the day. So both these teams really pushing for those kind of things. And I think for Dominus versus V5, that is basically you win, you're still in, you lose, yep. and you're out. It's incredibly tough. Only one team has been actually eliminated from this one so far. And uh, even if they reach seven, it will require a bit of luck and most likely tiebreakers as well, which is going to be super intense on the last week. If we do have mm -hmm. tiebreakers, they will be played, I no. believe, no. after the last day. It depends. That's only if we have a three-way tiebreak, a three-way tie. So it would have to be a three-way, because if it's only two teams, they take either game score, and if that's tied, it's then yep. straight it's up head-to-head. It's very head. difficult to it's get super a head-to-head. Head. It's, it's incredibly super hard. super hard. But we'll have to wait and see. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much to everyone on our side of course thank you so much to dominion for setting up this production as well thank you clement for bringing us in and to all the analytical stuff i think i took a breath at the wrong point in that sentence there because you got a bit like come in where uh, <laughs> i was like oh okay we're yeah just thank you for bringing me here you know <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining us and we will see you again tomorrow
I'm never fair.